Today I'm going to be sharing with you the top three mistakes that my clients make in terms of their food mindset and what the best clients do instead. Hello my honeys, it's Emmy. If you're new to the channel, welcome. My name is Emmy. I'm a nutritionist and the creator of the Slim on Starch program. To learn how you can work with me inside of the Slim on Starch program, as well as your own personal mindset coach and nutrition coach, go to healthyemmy.org or just click the link in the down bar. Also make sure to hit subscribe and turn on the notification bell so that you can be notified every Wednesday and Saturday when I upload a new video. In my next video, I'm going to be talking about the top three food mistakes that my clients make around food. So make sure that you are subscribed and that the notification bell is turned on so that you can see that video. In case you're new here, I am very big on food mindset. I often say it's not as much what you're eating as what's eating you because I have client after client after client come to me, new client, and say, I am binge eating on vegetables. And you'll hear all these people say, you can't binge eat on vegetables. You can't binge eat on vegetables. And so I know if somebody is binge eating on vegetables, then this really has nothing to do with the food and it's not what they're eating, but it's what's eating them. So food mindset, mindset around food, body image, weight, all of this stuff is huge. It's so overlooked by so many and a lot of times people just want to slap a diet plan and say this is going to be the solution. And I think that's the reason why I'm already going down a rabbit hole. I think that's the reason why a lot of people come to this plant-based lifestyle in the first place is because they don't have any trust in their hunger fullness cues. They There is something that's eating at them unrelated to food, probably related to feelings of self-worth body image, where your worth is placed, if it's placed in what your body looks like, if it's placed in how others perceive you physically, that's usually where this all stems from. And so they develop a ruptured relationship with food. And then the plant-based diet presents itself as a solution to the ruptured relationship with food because they hear, oh, I can just eat as much as I want on this diet. Thank God. I don't have to struggle with trying to listen to hunger fullness cues or starving myself anymore. Thank goodness there's an answer and it's the plant-based diet. And I don't want to rain on the plant-based diet parade because I love a plant-based diet. I eat a fully plant-based diet. I teach my clients how to eat a plant-based diet. But what people don't tell you about the plant-based diet is that the answer is not 100% in the food and that a lot of the answer it's in you. And as a coach, it is my job to help you get that answer out of you and to pair it with adequate nutrition so that you can think straight and so that you can have your body be a healthy place where you live. You don't have any health issues that you need to deal with. You just feel fueled up. You are satisfied. You're eating nutrient dense foods and we can address whatever the root cause of all this really is. Okay. <laughs> the first mistake that many of my clients make is taking a micro relationship with the scale. Our weight fluctuates so much day to day. Weight can fluctuate up to 10 pounds in the course of one day because of intracellular water, extracellular water, food in transit, glycogen stores. There are so many things that contribute to what the number on the scale is going to say. And honestly, getting on the scale in the morning is like rolling into dice or scratching off a scratch ticket and saying, what's it going to be today? For the most part, it's going to be in the same arena. You're probably going to lose that $1 scratch ticket. And when you roll the dice, it's going to be somewhere between a two and a 12, but it's going to change every day. It is going to change every single day. And I don't think I've ever had a client. Maybe I have, but for the most part, I don't have clients who their weight goes down every single way and perfectly, 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 perfectly. The way that I do it with clients is we weigh ourselves three times a week, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. We take the average of that and we compare it to from week to week. The reason why we do this is because there are so many fluctuations from day to day that if the clients are just weighing in one time per week, it's too much of a crapshoot. Because let's say that you're losing weight and you are 161 on Wednesday, 162 on Thursday, and then you're down to 160 on Friday. And then the next week, the next Friday, you are back up at 160.2 again. And that turns out to be the average of the three days. 
people will think, oh no, last Friday I was 160 and now I'm 160.2. But the reality is that the average from the week before was higher than the average this week. And so you actually lost weight. So this is why it's important to take the average of three days from week to week because the fluctuations are just so unpredictable. A mistake that my clients sometimes make is their weight will go up from Wednesday to Thursday or their weight will go up from Thursday to Friday and it's the end of the world. And there's the belief that because the weight has gone up one day, that it's gonna go up the next day, it's gonna go up the day after that, it's gonna go up the day after that, and it's just, oh my goodness, what should I, what should I do? What am I gonna do? My weight is going up. But this is why we weigh in three times per week. I wouldn't have you weigh in three times per week if I wasn't expecting this to happen. This is going to happen. And if you can trust me on that and know that weight is gonna be up and down, but overall it's going down, then we're gonna have a lot more fun together. The second mistake that my clients make is failing to Google Earth themselves when a special occasion pops up. This seems quite nuanced and it is. Something that we do inside of the Slim On Starch program is form your signature system. This is what allows you to intentionally eat non-SOS foods on, you guessed it, special occasions. So during the course of our work together with clients, I will have clients have special occasions pop up. They will have birthdays, celebrations, anniversaries, their child's birthday, and they become quite alarmed at the fact that this is coming up. It's a big root of stress. And they think, how is this going to sabotage my progress? What I look at it as, as a huge opportunity for you to turn the Slim on Starch diet into a lifestyle for the long term. This is a great opportunity for you to contribute to the longevity of your success on this lifestyle. No matter where you live, what you do for a living, what you look like, what your weight is, what your occupation is, you are going to run into scenarios where you are going to eat non-SOS foods. There's no other way to slice this. You are going to eat non-SOS foods at some point in your life, and that is okay. And I think that doing it during the course of our work together is a great thing to do. What a lot of my clients mistakenly do is say, well, how is this gonna sabotage my weight loss? I signed up for this program. It's just this amount of weeks. I'm gonna commit to it. I'm gonna commit fully during these weeks. And I say, I love that you are so enthusiastic about this. That's great that you want to fully commit to it. But I don't want you to just commit to six or eight weeks together. I want you to commit to a life of this. And to commit to a life of this, you're going to have to commit to intentionally eating non-SOS foods on certain days so that the majority of the time you can stay SOS. Clients will say, how is this gonna sabotage my progress? If you are saying that, then you are looking way too short term. If you say instead, how can I use this as an opportunity to contribute to the longevity of this lifestyle? Then you are going to win. Because if you allow yourself to on special occasions have non-SOS food and 95% of the time you can get right back on the wagon, you're somebody that's going to be successful in the long term. If you are 100% committed to being 100% SOS 100% of the time, then you might not find success in the long term. And so for my clients that have special occasions, they often make the mistake of saying that they wanna be 100% SOS during the special occasion. While they find more success during the eight weeks that we have together, I want them to have success for a lifetime. And I would rather have them lose 0.1 less pounds during the course of our work together so that they can be successful for the rest of our lives than have them lose a ton of weight in the eight weeks. And honestly, if they don't have cake on their birthday during the SOS program, you know what's gonna happen? I'll tell you exactly what's gonna happen. Their birthday comes during the SOS program. They don't have a slice of cake. And then next year rolls around, we're not working together anymore and they have the slice of cake, they binge out, maybe they gained weight back, and they go, oh my goodness, remember when I was in the SOS program, I didn't have a slice of cake? How crazy was that? You're right, that is crazy. You should have cake on your birthday. And so sometimes it falls on deaf ears when I say it to clients, no, it's okay for you to have this. I want you to have this during the course of our work together because I really wanna set you up for success for the long term. The third mistake that my clients make is 
researching other diets, other ways of eating, or even watching how other people in the whole foods plant-based world eat. This is like if you are married and you're going on Tinder. Why would you do that? If you are so happy with what you have here, why are you looking at the way that other people are eating? What are you searching for there? I want you to ask yourself that. When I'm watching what other people are eating or I'm searching for other diets, what am I really looking for here? What emotion am I probably getting from doing this? And that's a really big question because I'm sure that opens a can of worms when you start to consider why is it that I'm spending so much time watching how all of these other YouTubers eat? Why is it that I'm researching all of this stuff? What I see it as is you don't understand that the answer is not in all these other YouTube videos. The answer is not in all of these podcasts. The answer is within you and it comes down to your actions. And you might think, well, I don't know what actions to take. That's why I mean, I listen to these podcasts. That's why I watch these YouTube videos because I have to see what other people are doing and do the same thing. But that's not the case. That's exactly why in my program, we have your plate builder and then we have how to listen to your hunger and fullness cues because all of the answers are inside of there. These two things put together allow you to trust your hunger and fullness cues and you don't have to watch what anybody else is doing. It's only going to confuse you. It's like, you, you know how they say, don't snoop because you'll snoop if you have a significant other. Don't snoop on what they're doing because you snoop until you find something that you don't wanna find and you don't stop until that happens. All you are doing by doing this, there's two options. If you are looking at other diets, other ways of eating, you're doing one of two things. Either you're validating what you're already doing, so you're just wasting your time really because you take the same action anyway, or you're confusing yourself and you're making this even harder for yourself. So there's no benefit from this because you're either validating what you're already doing, which means you're gonna to continue to take the same actions that you would if you never saw it in the first place. Maybe your emotions feel a little bit more secure or you're making yourself more confused, which is gonna make you more anxious about whatever it is that you're doing, but you're probably gonna take, continue to take the same action. So there's no benefit in searching other diets. And what I encourage my clients to do is, once we start working together, unfollow everybody else, unfollow all the other, everything that is going to cloud up this, unfollow it because all the answers are within you. Nobody else on this planet knows how much you need to eat except for you. And you might say, I don't know how much I'm supposed to eat. And that's why we're gonna get you back into with your hunger fullness cues so that you can do exactly that. But a top mistake that I see is looking, you know, the shiny object syndrome, looking at what everybody else is doing, what everybody else is eating and letting that influence what you're doing. I do want to pull back and, and revisit what I noted there about if you find that so much of your time is surrounding what I eat in a day videos and nutrition topics and all of this, consider when did I start to become interested in this stuff? Was I really interested in this stuff before I started to have struggles with my weight and my relationship with food? Or is this a product of my relationship with food? There are people, you know, doctors and researchers who this is really what they're interested in and they watch this stuff because it really is their interest. But think about with you, is this really truly an interest of mine or is it an interest by default because I've had so many struggles with food? It's likely the latter. Think back to what you were interested in when you were a kid and when you were growing up before you had any food issues. Were you interested in fashion, in sports, in reading, in science, in outer space, in tennis, in dancing, in art, in painting, in knitting, in crafts? What were your interests? Gardening, I, I can think of so many things, religion, spirituality, yoga, meditation, what were your interests 
before this whole food thing started, and for a lot of people, they can't answer that question. And that's why in my program, one of the first things we do is we discover exactly that. Who you are, who are you without this whole food thing? You might not even know yourself anymore. Your purpose on this earth is not to sit and watch what I eat in a day videos all day. There is so much more to you that makes you unique. And you're, you're worth discovering what that is. I think that to, to go your whole life and to get to the end of it and say, why did nobody shake me and tell me you are worth more than just sitting around watching what I eat in a day videos? If I'm the person that needs to shake you to do that, then I'm shaking you to do that right now. Uh, food is here to fuel us. Food is here to allow us to live a beautiful life. It is not the thing that we should be focusing on with such an obsession that it takes up so much other, so much other brain space that there's no other brain space to to enjoy hobbies and activities and relationships that make life worth living. One of the most rewarding parts about my work with clients is I get to finally meet them. I actually had an experience quite recently and I'm not gonna say her name, but if you are watching this video, this client of mine that we had this experience with, please comment or just write me and say, I know it was me that you were talking about. A few months ago, she was really going through it. And we finished up our work together just this month and we had a Zoom call to sort of bring things together this month. And myself and another coach were on the call and we looked at her and we said, wow, I feel like I can finally see you. Let's say her name was Stacy. I said, Stacy, I feel like I finally see Stacy. I finally see you. She was so at peace and I really felt like I saw her and the original Stacy for the pseudonym that I'm using that I had met back in the summer was so clouded by the struggles with weight and food. It was like the her soul, I couldn't penetrate who she really was because it was so clouded up by food and weight. And I'm sure people watching this video can, can really identify with that themselves that that's an emotion that you could be experiencing. That who you are has been lost and it's been taken by this obsession with the food. We only have so much brain space. Uh, we can't do it all. As humans, we do have limits. And for a lot of people, those limits are completely consumed by thoughts of food and body. My next video is going to be the top mistakes that my clients make around food. So make sure that you subscribe to the channel so that you can see that one and I'll see you guys in my next video.